So you have to have a unique hormonal environment to create that. And yet in bodybuilding that happens. So why would we think that relaxant cannot be created? Mm -hmm. It's very possible that some combination, maybe growth hormone, maybe insulin, maybe IGF-1, maybe because insulin, IGF-1 and relaxant are in the same family. So maybe somehow these things together are producing relaxant in the bodybuilders, which may be one of the reasons that their joints are getting so much weaker. The collagen tissue in the joints get much weaker. Mm -hmm. They have uh, replacements of, of joints frequently. They also have this uh, space happening between all the abs. Now, mainly you see this from the two uh, from the two sides, but in bodybuilding uniquely, you also see it between the abs to the point where eventually the abs are not clear anymore, like in William Bonnex's case. <laughs>
you don't see any lines. Mm. For example, William Bonac, I probably put a picture of him here. William Bonac has almost no ab definition. And he doesn't just have the abs splitting, because you can see the abs a little bit, but you can't really see much anymore. Now, what's happening here? I have a theory. Uh, and there's other people too, but I don't want to say them, you know, but the point is this, just go look at the bodybuilders that you like and look at how the definition around the abs is disappearing. Not just that line, but other lines. What's happening here? I have a theory. So in, in pregnant women, it's known that there's a hormone. It's a, it's a relative of the insulin family. It's called relaxin. Mm -hmm. Relaxin is released during pregnancy, which causes uh, a re, uh, restructuring of collagen matrices, ma matrices, which basically restructures the collagen in the area to allow the woman to expand. Mm -hmm. Now, so why, why don't obese people get this as often? They don't have similar hormones to pregnant women. It's, it's harder to get it unless they have those hormones. Uh, why do I know this? Because I've been obese. You know, I was obese when I was younger, many times. I never stayed obese, by the way. I, I, I have very strong willpower. So when I got to like, uh, you know, whatever fatness level, I eventually stopped and I lost all the weight, but I could see what would happen. So I've also had what's called a beer belly, a huge belly, you know, not just when I was weightlifting, I'm talking about before, but with time periods where I was not weightlifting at all for years and years. I had a, what's called a beer belly, huge one. You could even set a beer on top of it and drink from it. And what would happen? <laughs> I had that, I didn't notice if the ads were splitting or not, to be honest, but afterwards, I would lose the weight, train for a little bit, my abs were back to normal. All of the, the abs, normal, I didn't notice anything. But then, I started using hormones properly, and I stayed on hormones for over a year, and I started using growth hormones. Now, I used them before, but not that much. I spent a two-year period where I was on hormones, and what happened? The abs split. Now I had again, obviously an extended midsection, otherwise it won't happen probably, probably, who knows. But it split in that time and it never recovered. And it didn't recover in anyone else I've ever seen, anyone, nobody. Everybody who seems to have had that change in the, in the, in the, in the tissue there, it seems permanent. Like for example, you can even see Dave Palumbo, with all my respect to him, I love Dave Palumbo, I was on his show before and he's a great guy. And Dave has been so successful and one of the unique people in bodybuilding that he really stopped using steroids. So you can see how his body has changed. Now, he, when he was uh, com competitive, he also experienced this, complete uh, lack of definition of all the ab muscles. It's not because of the ab muscle not being strong, he did do body weight training and stuff like that. I believe it's because that just like the linea alba mm -hmm. becomes stretched, all the others also became stretched. So the definition goes away, mm -hmm. just like on uh, William Bonner. Now, Dave, even though he's smaller and he's low body fat and everything recovered, but and his midsection has gotten tiny, he has a very small midsection. People, maybe they don't know that. I met him in person, small midsection, but the abs don't show. Why? Because that, that I believe, that tissue doesn't recover. So the, the same case with me right now, as I'm speaking to you, I have at least a half inch or an inch, depending on whether I'm uh, protruding my belly or, or pulling it in. A half inch to an inch of space between the ab muscles. Mm -hmm. And that stuff is not going away. Now, how, what causes relaxin to increase? It's the, it's the, it's the high uh, levels of uh, estrogen and progesterone and other hormones that are raised during pregnancy. Now, you may be thinking, what does that have to do with bodybuilding? Well, Bodybuilders sometimes, think of it this way, Lucy, you, you may not, I don't know if you've heard this before, but bodybuilders sometimes when they're using their hormones, they start to lactate. Did yeah, I ever mention this to you? Yeah, yeah, so sometimes they can lactate. Um, and what does that mean? Lactation happens when progesterone, when progesterone and testosterone are high, or sorry, progesterone and estrogen are high, and then they drop suddenly, lactation happens. So you have to have a unique hormonal environment to create that. And yet in bodybuilding that happens. So why would we think that relaxin cannot be created? Mm -hmm. It's very possible that some combination, maybe growth hormone, maybe insulin, maybe IGF-1, maybe because insulin, IGF-1 and relaxin are in the same family. So maybe somehow these things together are producing relaxin in the bodybuilders, which may be one of the reasons that their joints are getting so much weaker. The collagen tissue and the joints get much weaker. Mm -hmm. They have uh, uh, replacements of, of joints frequently. They also have this uh, space happening between all the abs. Now, mainly you see this from the two uh, from the two sides, but in bodybuilding uniquely, you also see it between the abs to the point where eventually the abs are not clear anymore, like in William Bonex case. So, uh, so he wanted uh, David wanted to ask, you know, 
I don't know the solution because I haven't done it on myself. I would love to hear if you have any improvements. What I do know from the literature is that there is some evidence that the working the the first of all that you can use tape like uh, this tape that uh, chiro not chiropractors but physical therapists use to yeah. hold certain muscles in yeah. place. You can use that tape to move it a little bit while you're working out if your skin isn't too loose. It has worked. And the other thing is that. Uh, working the tr uh, transverse abdominis, which is the muscle under, you know, when guys do vacuums, that muscle work like breathing out and pulling it in, that seems to be uh, helpful to pull it in. But I don't believe that you can change the, you'd have to have relaxin again, I would assume, and you'd have to keep it closed while that relaxin refig refigures. It's interesting to see a woman that recovered from pregnancy, how their hormones, like what's the difference between the one that recovered and the one that didn't? Yes, that's a good question. And that's a very complicated issue. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, even if you had relaxin, and even if you somehow force them close, the, the ab sizes, you don't have the pressure to keep it closed. You, that maybe you would hope that there would be some kind of apoptosis of cells where the cells are dying and then it just gets stuck there. But I would imagine that would take years for it to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I don't really know. I mean, I've not seen anyone that recovered. Now, if I was to theorize, I definitely know mine recovered. I mean, mine was two and a half inches. So it was quite, not two and a half, maybe two inches. It was quite a bit bigger than now, at least double. And I do know that I recovered somewhat and I do know that more recovery happened while I was in the fasting periods. Mm. So I, I predict, now we know one thing about fasting. We know that in rodent studies, fasting uh, five day fasts, which in rodents are like two days, they decrease the organ size by 90, uh, by 10%. So they get to 90% of their size. And then after the fast, they go back to the normal size, but they're rejuvenated. Mm. So the actual quantity, the cellular nature of the, of the organs has changed. Now, what does that mean? That means that, first of all, during the fast, your area, the organs will shrink. But second of all, you're going to have that reju rejuvenation everywhere, not just in the organs. So you're going to have some of that going on in that area. Also, you may be having... Uh, what's called autophagy, which is a breakdown of the protein in your body, you will be having that. And some of that will come, if, especially if you work out, a lot of it will come from your skin and your connective tissue that you're not using. So if there's not much pressure on that connective tissue, you would imagine it would be possible over a few cycles to slowly decrease it. The other thing is that with fasting, there's a, a disproportionate uh, reduction in visceral fat compared to subcutaneous fat. So if you do extended fast over several times, you will reduce the visceral fat that you have in the organs mm -hmm. that was originally pushing that out. Now, David asked me, he didn't say in the question, but he asked me about, he has a protrusion of his belly still. Now, if you have a protrusion, this thing is not going to heal itself until you deal with the pr protrusion. The protrusion could be coming from inflammation in your organs or fat on your organs or between your organs. In either case, the solution is fasting. So you have to become a friend of fasting. Now, what's going to happen to you, David? David's still quite muscular. What's going to happen to him is that when he uh, starts this fasting, he's going to lose muscle and he's going to get freaked out. Probably he's going to want to stop. But you have to go through that. Go through the loss of muscle. At least decrease the protrusion. You will regain the muscle quite easily as long as you don't overeat or increase your IGF-1 too much. You won't re regain the uh, abdomen size. Yeah, and you made a video on that before. Yeah, we've discussed this many times. But also I'd like to mention... Uh, there's something else I wanted to mention. Oh yeah, I wanted to mention also guys that you'll usually see that this uh, melting of the uh, ligament or the connective tissue fiber that's involved with the uh, abs often coincides with hernias. People who have this usually have a hernia. In fact, William Bonner currently, I think maybe, I don't know if he got rid of it, but he has a very small poking hernia on his. And a lot of them, in fact, I, I tagged David in a post I happened to see when I was looking through Instagram of a gentleman bodybuilder uh, based in Dubai actually, who has a space between his abs and a permanent, uh, he has a hernia on his belly button. Just perfect combination to show and I tagged David because that's what tends to happen. I'll try to find the picture and put it here also if I can. But the point is, You'll find these things go hand in hand. And I believe, and there is some evidence, well, there is, there is clinical evidence that having the, uh, the separation of the abs is correlated to having hernias. But I believe it's actually a causal factor because you have a weakening of the, of the tissue there, which is easier to poke through. I can tell you from firsthand experience right now myself that uh, my separation, which came entirely from my weightlifting phase, as I said, not from when I was obese or anything like that, only from that phase, Right now, you can feel a weakness, like a hollowness. 
I think, as I said, if someone stabbed me, it would be like going through butter as long as they aim correctly. So that, imagine if you had the protrusion of the intestines, it would go right through eventually, mm -hmm. much easier than if everything was solidly there. So be, be aware of that. You don't want to keep a protruding belly while you have that weakening of the connective tissue. Otherwise, you're going to get hernias and you're going to need surgery for sure, which happens to so many bodybuilders. So many people have hernia, uh, surgeries. You know, somebody that uh, you know in bodybuilding that we both know has had it three times. A lot of people have it. I've had hernia surgery, but not because of bodybuilding, just a genetic thing when I was younger. And it's not something you want to go through. It's not too painful, but it's, you don't want to go through it. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for your question, David. We'll see you tomorrow.